MSNBC's Garrett Hake is on Capitol Hill with some news for us. Garrett. Nicole, I was listening to Jerry Nadler's very short press statement and your comments afterwards that this is someone who is happy to be done with his job as a chairman. And I thought it was interesting because he is not necessarily done. Now the thing that everyone is really focused on here in the, uh, in, in the House and in the Senate is who's going to be these impeachment managers. And Jerry Nadler's single statement is probably not going to get the job done. You look at the way Adam Schiff has handled this operation here. We've got some... Uh, yeah, don't Friendly stop. We love it. We're, this we're in this with you, Garrett. No, no, you keep moving. Good. It's very, uh, so, what is it, Dave? We're yeah. walking. We're talking. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Here's the point I'd like to make. Adam Schiff has used every opportunity that he could thus far to advocate for this position. He's been in front of the cameras. He's been giving extra speeches. He's been out doing interviews. Nadler has done that less so. And in talking to Democrats after this vote here this morning, I've heard from a lot of them that they see this, that this has to be a two-front effort. They know that Mitch McConnell has made it very clear. He thinks the things on the Senate floor will be under his control, that they'll work very closely with the White House. But that's not something that has to be the case off the Senate floor, and that this needs to be a massive media effort. It needs to be an outside effort by Democrats to try to make the case to the public directly. And then you have to work from the outside in here so that folks like Schiff, who've been speaking more to the cameras, folks like Jamie Raskin, perhaps, might be much more effective in this than someone like Nadler, who, while he ran a very tight ship yeah. over the last 14 hours here in a committee markup, uh, as was demonstrated in that brief statement to the press, not necessarily the most effective communicator. And Gary, Nicole. we keep, t I want to say two things. One, um, you guys are the real heroes doing your jobs outside the comforts of climate control studios and handling with grace people who have strong feelings about the press. So kudos to you, my friend, um, especially on very little sleep when I can barely um, get in a taxi without snarling at somebody. But let, let me also ask, I mean, this is why I, I've asked Congressman Swalwell and, and everybody about making the eyewitnesses, making the Trump appointees, making the career foreign service officers the diplomats, the people who have the first-hand accounts, one of the stakes, that this was life or death, black and white for the Ukrainians, and two, that there was no debate about who was holding up the money. It was Trump. And why? Because he wanted investigations into Burisma in 2016. And I guess what you're saying is this is where behind the scenes people like Adam Schiff and his staff can be helpful again. Right, exactly. I mean, there's two ways this can go. I mean, if the Senate ultimately decides that they don't want to call witnesses, Democrats are going to have a very narrow window to make their case, maybe three or four days. I mean, if this becomes a two-week trial, you could see a situation in which the prosecution, in this case the impeachment managers, get four days to present their case. Mm -hmm. The White House gets four days of a rebuttal. And, and that's a very narrow window. So the effectiveness of the communicators, both on the floor of the Senate and on cable television and on their local news mm -hmm. back home and in everywhere else, becomes really important because they're going to have to tell the stories instead of a Bill Taylor or mm -hmm. instead of an Alexander Vindman. If you get those witnesses on the floor, there is a very open debate, frankly, in both parties about the value of this because you mm -hmm. open a Pandora's box. If you are a Democrat, do you think it's more value to, valuable to get a Vindman or even if you're really lucky, a Pompeo or a Bolton? If the trade-off is you're going to see the White House pursue very aggressively getting Hunter Biden on the on mm -hmm. the floor or continue this effort to unmask and get testimony from the whistleblower on the floor. So everyone is doing that algebra here and trying to solve for what's the better outcome for your side. Do Democrats want to take that risk? Do they think they can peel off 20 Republicans, an enormously difficult challenge if they get those witnesses? Or do they try to make the narrowest of arguments possible rather than risk getting, you know, the Republican side getting to call their two or three witnesses and having that be more damaging to their argument or to the broader effort to remove President Trump in November if you can't do it on the floor of the Senate in January. I mean, I think what you're, the headline here, Garrett, is that there's still a lot of unknown um, uh, decision trees, that, that you're really talking about both sides being at a fork in the road about which way this Senate trial goes. I mean, do you go deep? You know, do you, do you go long? Do you, do you take the risk, which sounds like it exists for both